parties have never really been my thing. Yep, definitely the 28th. Can we look at the relationship thing so that little new thing goes away? <laughs> oh, he's got a gun. So Jamie's look at a... his relation no. with the rights. Ashton's got a gun. Very low. Hannah's kind of equal to Marianne. Still very But Luke low. is just like, no. Yeah. I want to know what dirt he has on these people. All right, let's get going. Are they going to tell us? I hope so. Parties have never really been my thing. <laughs> They're always such a hassle and take so much time off my day. Prior plans and com commitments canceled, all for the sake of playing along with others. And welcome, I don't play nice. Welcome, everyone. <laughs> I hated them as a child. Please, make yourselves at home. Mom often insisted. She'd slick my hair back, put me in one of those stuffy dinner jackets, and if there were any children around, urged me to make friends. Never mind how utterly loud or tedious it was. It was all for the sake of keeping up with appearances. Keeping up appearances, oh. <coughs> Does that make him like a sociopath? Psychopath? I don't remember. Not psychopath, probably socio-ish something. To some extent, lives have already surrounded me long before I've chosen what I wanted to do with my life. Luckily, there were easy ways to tune everything out, and much to my mom's frustration, I always managed to sneak my CD player along. <laughs> I kept to myself and to my music, had my own little world, until I learned to observe. It's a simple matter of awareness, really, and for some reason, and for someone with keen eyes, a skewed necktie or a simple flick of wrist alone could tell volumes about a person. I still don't like parties. Especially ones as big and fancy as the Rats housewarming. However, when there's actual reason to go to them, I figure they're not too bad. Be careful with Shirley, alright? Oh yeah, his car. <laughs> Besides, like it or not, it's all part of the job. I'm here on a mission. One that has the name Luke Wright plastered all over it. You'd think the man would want to remain inconspicuous after all his name was linked to several high-profile crimes across Luxburn. Granted, most of it all gone cold over the years, having stagnated without any lead or evidence. That still doesn't make him any less suspect. I forgot we had that theory about his nephew. Kylie's older brother. Oh yeah, it's like you do something that's a secret. Yeah. <laughs> and then Johan, this is like, oh, he collects them from his father. <laughs> You're like, we're his victims. <laughs> hmm. Yet here he is throwing a party in his own backyard. Well, actually, no. More of in his house. Although, having observed the man this past year, I'm not even shocked. He craves it. The damn spotlight constantly yearns for attention like a neglected puppy. It doesn't take a genius to figure out why he's nowhere to be found in his own party. But that's not the problem here. What pisses me off is how far he, his reach extends, how close he has creeped into the lives of the people I care about. Again, like a stubborn itch you couldn't be rid of. First, Professor Clark. What happened to him? I don't know. Because he doesn't like the rights. Yeah, he just got really pissed off at the mention of his name when yeah. we Rebecca talked to him in the street. Then there's Isabella. I also spotted Z-Man here a while ago, and now... Now there's also Rebecca. Can't you at least act with a bit more shame? Becca, if I find a single scratch on Shirley, there will be hell to pay. <laughs> There will also be hell to pay if he so much as harms a hair on either Zach or Rebecca's heads. Worrying about Isabella's brief dealings with him is stressing in itself already. I doubt he'll attempt anything in front of other people, though. It would tarnish his glorious reputation, and he values appearances more than anything. That doesn't necessarily mean he isn't capable of it. More than, in fact. And on the off chance he does something... I wouldn't be responsible for my actions. Those guys know what they're doing. 
The handling car is worth more than your precious Shirley. For Zachary's and Rebecca's sakes, however, I really hope this this will simply be another housewarming party. Even though something tells me it's anything but. Call it a detective's intuition or whatever. When Luke Wright's involved, nothing good has ever come out of it. I can't let my guard down here. Even more so when a familiar car slows to a stop and comes out. Chief? Yep, that's who I thought it would be. My presence here might be odd at best, but I have an excuse. One that this man handed to me himself a year ago, along with a heavy dose of flattery for the newly promoted detective inspector. Can't exactly say the same for my good old boss, can I? Although to see him here chatting up with Luxburn's rich and famous isn't such a big surprise in itself, no disrespect meant, but the guy is obviously a social climber. What is surprising is the fact that he seems all too eager to mingle with a person of interest's wife. Just what the hell is he doing here? Ashton, what's- Sorry, Becca, I just saw someone I need to catch up with. Longtime friend. What the shit is going on here? Oh wait, Ash, what about- This won't be long. Be careful while I'm gone, okay? It won't be long, it'll just be the entire party. <laughs> About what exactly? I don't want to draw attention to myself either, at least not until he's given me a proper reason to spoil his little party. Thank you for the invite, Anna. Husband still missing, I see. I should be saying the same of your darling Rochelle, Lee. The doctors again. For now, the best I can do is wait and remain inconspicuous, especially with Chief here, whose motives are dubious at best. If it means having to pretend I don't know Zack and Rebecca or forcing myself to rub elbows with people I barely know, let alone like, then so be it. I can't involve anyone. Wandering is out of the question as well when there are guards and... Civvies? I've only ever seen the word civvies used to describe, like, underwear. That's why I'm confused. I'm sure it means some kind of uniform. Okay. <laughs> I don't... I'm sure. They're just in their underwear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What kind of party is this? Guards and Civvy stationed here and there. Sure, getting past them is something I could do with ease, but I'd rather not right now, when I'm one of the few snooping and roaming about. It'd be best to try and do so once there's a crowd of people. And if their interior designer's drunk and claims are to be believed. Yes, well, what's about Luke? Should we file a missing persons report now, or do you want to wait 24 hours? He's around. <clears throat> you know, I can tell if someone's bluffing. It'll all come down to how we'll play how how well I'll play my cards tonight. Civvies, civilian clothes. So they're Oh, civvy for in, civilian, okay. Yeah, inconspicuous. Is that the same spelling for underwear though? Uh, nothing for underwear came okay. up, so... I just remembered... Are you talking about skivvies? Oh, I'm thinking... You're right. I'm thinking of skivvies. You're right. <laughs> I was <bad>. like, <laughs> Yep. Different word. Okay. With a good hand, this party is going to give me the breakthrough I need to crack Luke right. Or something to prove my suspicions wrong. Maybe find out what kind of game my boss is also playing. Everything... I've had an inkling before, a few hunches tempered down by how much of a bumbling fool the man appears. But one does not simply deal with the rights and get invited to a party they host without wanting anything from either of the two. Or it's the other way around. So, with a last wary glance at the two, I head into the ballroom. I just hope this will not complicate things further. Shit. Nice. The transition? Yeah. Shit. Fade to black. <laughs> <laughs> By the time the party's in full swing, night has fallen, yet there still isn't a Luke Wright in sight. He's a poet. Mm -hmm. I mean, we heard his rap at the beginning of the game. What? His ringtone is this really god-awful rap. Oh, I don't remember it at all. Oh, we're going to have to find that again. <laughs> <laughs> the man can be quite... Ostentatious, but this, frankly, I'm impressed. Ooh. 
I love the images of the food. Look at those deviled eggs. Oh my gosh. That looks really delicious. I don't know what that other thing is, though. I don't know what it's called either. It's a type of pie cake thing, but I don't... There's a word. There's. I'll have to look it up, what it's called. I don't even know how many hors d'oeuvres I've already stuffed my face with. Hmm. One too many, probably. The servers are already giving me a stink eye every time I saunter over the buffet table. <laughs> Blame your employer, not me. He's the one who has the guts to show up late. Besides, most of the guests' idle talk is concentrated on this area. Despite standing in the same roof with the very people they're whispering about, some just couldn't resist. I might as well keep an ear out for any useful info. Is Suarez still fixing that tech problem? Uh. <laughs> tech problem. <laughs> it's been three years. Sooner or later, the blighter will put two and two together. <sighs> he might have already. If the red tape I'm slammed with these past few months suggests anything. What are they referring to? I don't know. Who? The guests? Mm. I don't know. Some type of tech... I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that or someone has been pulling the strings. Like Chief Inspector Lee? Maybe? What was his last name? Lee? Oh, what's his first name? Chief? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. I had a sub has been pulling the strings. I, I wouldn't be shocked. This case would not have gone this long if Scumbag didn't have a mule of some kind in the force. Shush, you. We all know Suarez just wants an out. I knew he was bad news the day the merge of its Evans Incorporated happened. Feh. Glad I did not have to deal with that. But keep it down, someone might hear. The wife especially. Suarez. I'm just trying to think how they're related. Because Kylie's like the godfather or uncle. She calls him uncle, but they also say godfather. So is it both or is is uncle just kind of like an honorary uncle, just like Godfather's an honorary thing. You call him, rather than constantly saying, oh, "Oh, Godfather, you." They just call him uncle, type of thing. Kind of like how, um, like Grandma Pat. Yeah, like our Grandma Pat, who's not at all blood related to anything in our family at all, but our parents called them Uncle Pat or Aunt Pat. <laughs> 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 called her Aunt Pat, and now we call her. Yeah, that kind. Is it that kind of thing? I'm or, not sure. Why does it matter? It, I'm just wondering what the relation act, the, what the depth of the relation is, since they're talking about the Suarez, and I'm assuming they're talking about Kylie's dad, <sighs> who's out of town, for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. I do not like their ceiling, though. I've seen many beautiful ceilings. I do not like theirs. It seems like a, it's a waste of space for it to be something so simple. You correct. <laughs> What do you not like about it? Well, the flowers don't belong in the sky. <laughs> um, like... It makes them seem like ants looking up at I something. I don't know. It's very weird. <laughs> flowers do not belong in the sky. Yep, yep. Good, good points. This kind of negligence has always been an advantage, but sometimes I wish I could be smashed or drunk while doing this. Having sharp ears also means you get to hear the most unsavory things. Who cheated on who this week? One person's motive for bashing someone's skull against a wall. Or a father's excuse for burning his own daughter alive. Those sorts of stuff. What? Dead body in a couch? Mm-hmm. <laughs> After a few years, it gets tiring. You get desensitized to it. But humans could also be downright awful. Sometimes there simply isn't enough brain bleach in the world. Sadly... The wine is a no-go tonight, and mostly for show. I'm up for another drive later. I'm up for another drive later, for one, and I definitely want to be sober in case something comes up. And something always comes up in assignments like this. The detective inspector dying of cardiac arrest, for example. <laughs> because I can feel the moment my heart grinds to a halt the second I shift my eyes to a corner of the ballroom. Hana Wright. Some will say I'm acting a touch bit paranoid, and maybe I am. 
This is a party, and she's the hostess. It goes to say that she'll take time to mingle with her guests. But Hannah Wright, nay, Evans. Me? Nay? Yeah, is it without her fair share of accolades? At least to the public, she doesn't seem like it. Unlike her husband, she's the one with the business sense, not to mention the impressive track record needed to manage a company. Or effectively hide whatever irregularity there might be. Irregularity. She's clean as far as my agents and I have found, but it doesn't rule out a possible involvement with whatever her husband's up to. I think she's oblivious. Yeah, probably. Hell, Luke Wright came out clean in previous reports until I bothered to take a deeper look into it. What I found may not be sufficient to bring anyone to trial yet, but it's enough to nurture suspicion. This may a bit, be a bit of an overreaction, but no one lasts long in my line of work by being careless. You would catch his eye a lot better if you wore nicer clothes, don't you think? Didn't realize the housewarming was going to be this uh, fancy. I would have gone with a nice dress if I knew. Nothing to be worried about, then. She's probably even more careful with appearances than her own husband, having grown up with the spotlight focused on her. Yet, even knowing that the anxiety stays, has been here since the party started. I've brushed it off earlier. Who wouldn't feel edgy, right? I've gone undercover in a party hosted by the very person I'm investigating. That in itself is risky and has plenty of rooms for error. Usually, though, the tension passes around the first half hour or so. I've been trained to remain composed in situations like this. However, with each second I spend here, it only grows heavier and seeks to overwhelm. An odd feeling that someone is watching me instead. Do you hear that? I do. It has been like this since last week, but I should already be used to this. People would be looking at me no matter how small or big of a blip I am on their radar. That's what they do in these things. But when the feeling of eyes burning into my back lingers longer than necessary, I've been looking around every now and then to catch the culprit. No luck. Despite my efforts to push the sensation as far down as I could, tiny pring pinpricks continue to sting the back of my head and the ghost of a cold of a cold touch creeps up my limbs until my gaze switches back to Rebecca and Hannah Wright she stands there dark haired and dirty sticking out like a sore thumb did we see her when we were one of the girls did like Hannah see her when this happened do you remember Yes, Hannah saw her for a moment here too, okay. yes. Rebecca didn't, obviously. Mm. <laughs> Even so, no one seems to notice. Although she's looking away from her, Mary's, mere existence here strikes, disturbs. A sense of tunnel vision blinds while I stand rock still and gape at her. My life depends on making sure she stays where she is. I feel trapped in her presence until another guest bumps into me, yanking me out of my stupor. Only then do I realize that I've been holding my breath. Before I could figure out what happened, she's gone. A quick scan of the room yields no sign of her. The party continues as if nothing's amiss. I'm not really one to judge, but I'm sure someone like that would not have been allowed in a fancy thing like this. <laughs> What has the security been doing? Are they really that incompetent or someone so distinct to easily get in without notice? There shouldn't have been an outcry by now, particularly from the host. She's been standing almost at arm's length away from the woman, and yet she simply continues her talk with Rebecca. Oh, the professor! And your little Becky! <sighs> My parents couldn't make it since they're in Scotland right now. And Mom says hi, by the way. Scotland's not far. Okay. Is there... Is there something in the food, then? That I'm starting to see things? It couldn't have been the wine, though. I'm every bit as sober as when I first stepped off my car. The hors d'oeuvres? 
But why would anyone want to do that? Why would... Oh, excuse me. Why would Luke Wright want to do that? He's fishy, but I couldn't see why he'd ever think it'd be a good idea to lace food he'd serve in his party with someone like Chief Inspector Lee on his guest list to boot. He has been linked to narcotics trade, yep. However, that kind of tactic is below him. That much I could tell. Unless there's a mass murder, or mass murder waiting to happen here tonight, which I highly doubt. So? What the fuck was that? But there's no time to look deeper into this, even if I want to. Not when a telling silence comes upon the room and draws everybody's attention to the main doors of the ballroom. About damn time. Good evening, ladies and gents. Enjoying the party. I hope I'm not too late in welcoming you all to the right mansion. I've been tailing this guy for a while now. Before that, I heard stories from previous officers who tackled this case. None of which are present. Pleasant. They're not present either. Mind, I'm not counting the incident with Professor Clark yet. Pleasant is glossing over the gravity of it. While Wright's good at covering whatever shady stuff he's doing, he's shown to be a real rotten guy. At least, that's the case when he thinks none of his peers are around to judge him. I've lost track of how many counts of verbal abuse and harassments cases the guy could be pinned with. Standing in the same room as him doesn't make me want to punch him any less. Actually, they're just stronger, but protocols. My case, first and foremost. My own opinion of the man shouldn't get ahead of my purpose here. If I want to put him in his place, it should be in a court, with all proper charges filed against him. And I'll... And I'll only be able to do that once I gather enough evidence to pin this bastard down. Welcome, one and all, to our humble abode! Tonight, if you have yet to find yourself in your roles, you are all ladies and lords of the court of your king and queen, if you would excuse my presumptuousness. <laughs> so, enjoy the feast that has been laid out for your senses as we only allowed the best to be served. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone! Suppressing my annoyance, I prepare to step away from the crowd. Amidst the cheers and claps, now is as good as time as any to move. Try to find that something the McCulloch woman talked about. In the first place, I have no plans to actually shake hands with the slime ball himself. Fake smiles plastered on my face while I pretend to listen to one of the other guests gossiping about him. All while slowly inching out of the ballroom. Unfortunately, before I could get any further... Are you feeling ill, Rochelle? Perhaps you need to sit down and... Rich people only have two ways to resolve their mess. Either they quietly deal with it behind closed doors, or they create an even greater problem out of it, and it just blows up in everyone's faces one way or another. Fun. No! Shut it, you monster! I ain't talking to you! I'm talking to this scumbag over here! You bloody bastard standing there with your smarmy smile! Not even a few seconds in, and this has already proven itself to be a big public spectacle. Why spend money on a television to buy daytime soap operas? You could just go to one of these parties and see the action unfold in real life. You get free food, too. Really, if I were an actual guest, I'd just take this as some sordid form of amusement. Watch your tongue! You're on thin ice, Rochelle! Where's your husband? Who even invited you? But I'm not a guest who's here for a good time. I need to focus on him, even though this whole sorry, even through this whole sorry tale. So I wait, I listen, I observe. Interesting, isn't it, though? That's the chief inspector's wife. 